welcome to Pit Boys and Podiums with me, Maya Westwick. Today we are going to be talking all about Oscar Piastri, so buckle up and let's talk F1! Alright guys, so as I said, today is all about Oscar Piastri. So, Oscar was born on the 6th of April 2001, he is 23 years old, he's an Aries and he has three sisters. He currently competes in Formula 1 for McLaren and he was awarded Rookie of the Year last year, having competed in 22 races so far. He was born in Melbourne, Australia and he moved to Europe to pursue racing at the age of 14 as a boarding pupil at the Haleybury and Imperial Service College near Hartford, England. He started racing remote control cars at a national level, which is a very similar interest to pre-karting Lewis Hamilton and Esteban Ocon, I believe, and potentially some other drivers as well, I just don't know about at the moment, before beginning his karting career in 2011. Having built up a bit of a reputation in Australia, competing in various races and championships in 2014, with his dad serving as his mechanic, in 2015 he began competing in European and other CIK FIA sanctioned events with Ricky Flynn Motorsport. In 2016, that's when at the age of 14 he moved to England to further his racing career And that year, he finished sixth in the 2016 CIK FIA World OK Junior Karting Championship in Bahrain. In early 2016, Piastri landed his first major sponsorship, which was HP Tuners, a vehicle diagnostics automotive software company founded and owned by his father, which helped fund his racing career. He then made his single-seater debut in selected rounds of the Formula 4 UAE Championship with Dragon F4, claiming two podium finishes to finish sixth in the championship. In 2017, he was named as part of TRS Arden Junior Racing Team's lineup for British F4. He claimed six wins and six pole positions, finishing second in the championship. In 2018, he made his debut in Formula Renault Euro Cup, again with Arden, claiming three podiums. He finished the season ninth in the championship. In 2019, he switched to reigning team champions Race GP. He claimed his first victory in the series at Silverstone and then won again the next day, also at Silverstone. He won again at Spa-Francorchamps, becoming the champion after taking a win and a fourth place at the final round in Yas Marina. He then joined the post-season Formula 3 test with reigning Formula 3 champions Prima Racing. In January 2020, Prema signed him for the 2020 F3 season alongside Logan Sargent and Frederick Vesti. Also in January 2020, he joined the Renault Sport Academy, which then when Renault rebranded to Alpine, became the Alpine Driver Academy. Since early 2020, he has been managed by ex-Formula 1 driver Mark Webber. And after a season-long battle in 2020 with Sargent, they started the final race of the Formula 3 calendar tied on 160 points. Sargent crashed out of the race on the first lap and Piastri's only remaining rival, Teo Pocha, was not able to finish with enough of a points difference to him to beat him, allowing Piastri to finish the race seventh and claim the championship in his rookie Formula 3 season, three points ahead of Pocha and four points ahead of Sargent. After winning this title, he then took part in his first Formula One test in October with Renault at the Bahrain International Circuit. In 2021, Piastri continued his career with Prema, but he moved up to Formula Two, replacing Mick Schumacher and partnering Robert Schwartzman. He claimed his first Formula Two win at the second race of the year after overtaking fellow Alpine junior Zhou Guan Yu on the final lap of the race. He clinched the title with a podium in race one at Yas Marina before winning the feature race his fourth feature race win in a row, meaning he had won six races throughout the season more than anyone else, and he won the championship by over 50 points. He joined the company of Nico Hulkenberg, Nico Rosberg, Lewis Hamilton, Charles Leclerc, and George Russell as the only drivers to win their Formula 2 or back in the day, GP2 title in their rookie seasons, and he was the fifth driver after all of the above apart from Nico Rosberg to have won their Formula 3 slash GP3, again, depending on when they took part in it, title, and then 
Formula 2 title the next year. And he was also the first driver to win three consecutive Formula 1 feeder series championships with his 2019 Formula Renault Euro Cup title. So he won in 2019, won in 2020, won in 2021. After his Formula 2 victory in 2021, he was appointed Alpine F1 team's reserve driver for the 2022 season because there was not a seat for him on the grid. And he was also made available as a reserve driver for McLaren following an agreement between the two teams. In June 2022, it was initially speculated that Piastri would be driving for Williams F1 for the 2023 season on loan from Alpine, who were expected to retain Esteban Ocon and Fernando Alonso. So with that, Alpine wouldn't have an opening in their team for him, so they looked elsewhere to find him a Formula 1 seat. However, in August 2022, Sebastian Vettel announced his retirement from Formula 1 and very quickly after that, Fernando Alonso announced that he would be leaving Alpine to go and replace Vettel at Aston Martin. Alpine then released a statement announcing Piastri as their driver for the 2023 season. Although no comments from Piastri were included in that announcement and Piastri himself didn't say anything. They released this statement saying that Piastri would be driving for them during the night time in Australia. Obviously, I don't know where Oscar was in the world when it happened, but we didn't hear from him or from Mark Webber for a few hours. So hours went by with no comment from either of them. And everyone was like, it's a little bit strange that there's been no comment. Like there's no comment either way. Eventually, Piastri tweeted, I understand that without my agreement, Alpine F1 have put out a press release late this afternoon that I am driving for them next year. This is wrong and I have not signed a contract with Alpine for 2023. I will not be driving for Alpine next year. Which was regarded as a very, very bold move considering at this point, to public knowledge, he didn't have a Formula One seat lined up for 2023. So if he wanted to be a Formula One driver, he's just turned down a blatant offer to be a Formula One driver. There had been whispers of a contract with McLaren, but there was nothing definite at the time. And then Alpine's team principal at the time, Otmar Schaffnauer, criticised Piastri's response and his integrity as a human being and said that he expected loyalty from a former academy driver threatening to take the contract matters to court. Otmar's whole behaviour around the whole thing and his whole attitude about the thing was very strange. It was very unprofessional in Drive to Survive, when that came out in like February, 2023, he'd made some very questionable comments in there and kind of like laughed at Piastri. So it just wasn't very professional from him. He did take it to court and the FIA's contract recognition board ruled against Alpine. Basically, if the contract recognition board ruled against Piastri, then that would mean that either he would be forced to drive for Alpine for 2023 or any team that was interested in him, i.e. McLaren, would have to pay a huge amount of money to get Piastri out of that contract. However, the FIA's contract recognition board deemed that Alpine didn't actually have a contract with Oscar. They couldn't just force him to drive for them. And they revealed that Oscar had had a contract with McLaren since the 4th of July, 2022, the day after the British Grand Prix. So Piastri's move was confirmed very soon afterwards. Initially, the contract was guaranteeing Piastri a reserve driver role with McLaren for 2023 with an upgrade to a full race seat dependent on a contract termination with Daniel Ricciardo being agreed. Because obviously, technically, Daniel Ricciardo was still in contract with McLaren until the end of the 2023 season, but we all know how that played out. And if you don't, I can talk about it in a couple of weeks when I talk about Daniel Ricciardo. Piastri has said that the reason that he decided to leave Alpine in the first place was a breakdown in trust. So I do wonder what went on behind the scenes there for Piastri to have wanted to look elsewhere anyway. And then just the way that it went down, the way that Otmar publicly spoke about him, it was very strange. It was not what you'd expect. So that meant that 2023 was Oscar's first year in Formula One, but he was driving with McLaren, not with Alpine as they wanted. Alpine then signed Pierre Gasly and Otmar again made little comments about how it's better to have Pierre than it is to have Oscar anyway and all this. He was just being sour. But yeah, as I said in the Lando episode this week, McLaren did not have a good car at the start of the 2023 season. The MCL 60 pre-Austria and Silverstone was not good. Second half of the season, 
lovely car, well done. First half of the season, not good. And Oscar actually retired from his first ever Formula One race after his car failed to restart after a steering wheel change. So he had to go into the pits and change his steering wheel because there was a problem with it. They changed the steering wheel and then the car just would not start again. He only scored points at two races before Silverstone, which was P8 in Australia, P10 in Monaco. The P8 in Australia did mean that he got his first ever Formula One points at his home race, which of course is lovely. But of course, you know, he was probably hoping for a bit more than five points by the midpoint of the season. However, when they brought their upgrades to the MCL 60 at Silverstone, obviously Oscar got the upgrades one week after land day because McLaren feasibly couldn't do upgrades on both cars for each week. So Lando got the upgrades in Austria, Oscar then got those upgrades at Silverstone, the upgrades that Lando got at Silverstone, Oscar got at Hungary. So once Oscar was caught up, especially, it was fantastic. The upgrades that he brought for, the upgrades that they brought for Silverstone his performances improved dramatically. I'm going to talk about Silverstone because it was incredible. It really was. It was such a good drive from him. Um, and McLaren actually leapfrogged Alpine in the championship after these upgrades. Otmar then lost his job mid- mid-season as Alpine team principal, which many Oscar fans took pleasure in because he had just been really smarmy about the whole situation with Oscar. So like he'd really sarcastically wished Oscar luck in Drive to Survive and everyone was like, oh yeah, good luck Oscar, good luck Oscar, you don't have a job. So people were very animated about the fact that he'd lost his job. Obviously it's never nice that someone loses their job, but people did take great pleasure in it. I'm not gonna pretend that they didn't. Online, there was a lot of memes, which again, remember this is a real person. Don't be making memes about someone losing their job, but also don't be horrible and unprofessional, so. At Silverstone, Oscar finished P4 after qualifying a career best so far, P3, less than one second behind Hamilton in P3. So Silverstone, obviously Max Verstappen won. Lando Norris, Oscar's teammate, finished P2. Lewis Hamilton, home hero, P3. One second, less than one second behind Hamilton. Oscar Piastri, rookie, P4. It was beautiful. The whole weekend at Silverstone, he'd done very well, obviously qualifying third, which was the best qualifying of his career so far. All of that, it was a fantastic weekend for him. He drove incredibly well. It was just a very good weekend for McLaren, to be quite honest. The atmosphere there was amazing. Bring back Silverstone 2023. I wanna relive it. It was beautiful. At the next race in Hungary, he then finished in P5. And then at the Belgian Grand Prix, that was a sprint weekend. In the sprint race, he finished P2. And he actually qualified 0.011 seconds shy of pole sitter Max Verstappen for the sprint race. Although he did retire from the race itself after a collision with Carlos Sainz. But still, P2 in the sprint, good amount of points. He then finished P7 at Singapore and then signed a contract extension with McLaren until the end of 2026 on the 20th of September. So he is in his rookie season with the year. And by September, McLaren have gone, bearing in mind, Silverstone was in July. So between July and and September, with there being a month long summer break in there, McLaren have gone, we need to stop this boy going somewhere else. We need to make sure he is locked down. And that's what they did. And Oscar was obviously quite happy to stay with McLaren as well. He signed a very long contract with them. McLaren driver lineup is pretty much secured um, until the end of 2025 at least. I think McLaren are looking already at extending Lando's contract because again, they don't want him to go anywhere else. So they've got a very good team going on there. A Couple of days after this contract extension is signed, he qualified in second at the Japanese Grand Prix in his first ever time racing at Suzuka. He'd never driven there before in any feeder series. It's his first time at the track he qualifies second, which is his highest qualifying position so far. He was then overtaken by Lando Norris at the start of the race and he ended up finishing P3, earning his first proper Formula One podium in Japan. Because obviously the sprint podiums, they don't, the sprint finishes, they don't get to go on the podium itself. So he became a Formula One podium finisher at his first time racing in Japan in his rookie season. That made him the first rookie to be a podium finisher since Lance Stroll in 2017. So even, you know, Charles, George, 
Lando, Alex, even they didn't manage it as a rookie. Oscar did. That was also McLaren's first double podium of the year with Lando finishing P2 and also their first double podium since Monza in 2021 when Daniel finished P1, Lando finished P2. He then in Qatar won the sprint race, which a lot of people then used to talk badly about Lando, which I don't think is on. You don't need to be pitting them against each other. Oscar won the sprint race in Qatar after an incredible drive and finished P2 in the actual main race. Very, very good weekend for him. Qatar itself, the race weekend, not ideal, bit problematic. I've spoken about it on the TikTok before, but the McLaren boys did do very, very well and Oscar should be very proud of his performance. Bearing in mind, again, he is a rookie. It's his first season in Formula One. A lot of these drivers have a lot more experience than him and are gonna be a lot stronger than him because there is a huge difference in like the G-forces on your body as a Formula One driver opposed to Formula Two, Formula Three. Bear in mind he had a year out between this as well. He wasn't even racing in a junior series for a year before his first Formula One season. If this form is anything to go by, once he is given a car that is up there, can you imagine what they're gonna achieve together? Can you imagine? It was mind blowing. He finished the Mexican Grand Prix in P8, Las Vegas in P10, and Abu Dhabi, the last race of the season in P6, finishing ninth in the championship with 97 points, which is the most amount of points for a rookie season since Sir Lewis Hamilton. Obviously, the points system has changed since Lewis's rookie season, so Lewis would have got even more points, but the record is still there that Lewis has the most points for a rookie season of all time. Oscar has the second most points for a rookie season. Considering he literally scored five points up until July, do you see what I'm talking about here? He is an incredible talent. You, his entire junior career has displayed that he is an incredible, incredible talent. He's already broken so many records in the junior categories and now in Formula One. And I'm very excited to see what he can do with McLaren. I'm very excited to see what he can do in Formula One. Obviously, we've got him secured on the grid until 2026, unless something happens, because we know that these contracts are not always the most secure things in the world. But what a driver, what a driver. And I genuinely do think, based on the evidence of his junior career, based on his rookie season, I think given a car that has the potential as well. Oscar, I would not be surprised if he wins World Drivers' Championships at some point in his career. I would be more surprised if he didn't win a World Drivers' Championship, to be quite honest. I think he's an incredible talent. He's definitely someone that we need to watch out for. So I'm very excited to see what he manages to do. But yeah, that's everything that I was gonna talk about for Oscar. Obviously, with it only being his rookie season last year, I don't have loads and loads of information I can give you about his career in Formula One so far. But I've given you everything I can about his junior career and about his first season in Formula One. And I am very excited to see where he goes from here. I really am. And I do wonder, obviously McLaren, as I said in the Lando Norris episode, McLaren have really been hyping up their 2024 car. So if it is good, which fingers crossed it is, because you know, McLaren girly. So if it is good, he's gonna win a race this year. It was his rookie year last year in a car that was not very good for the first half of the year and he won a sprint race and finished p2 in the main race like it's coming it is very much coming thank you very very much for listening if you enjoyed this episode please do let me know you know like comment rate subscribe share the podcast please i would really really appreciate it and yeah, I will see you next week for some episodes on both of the Ferrari drivers and of course, another Formula One for Beginners episode. If there is anything in particular that anyone wants me to cover, do just let me know. You can let me know on the Pitboards and Podiums TikTok or on my personal Instagram, which is at Maya Westwick underscore, which is M-A-I-A-W-E-S-T-W-I-C-K underscore. Just let me know. And I hope you have a beautiful day, week, yeah, whatever you want to have. I'll see you in a few days time. Bye.